What is up, everyone? Welcome to another edition of our weekly Friday market update. I apologize for running a little bit late this time around, but we got a lot of exciting news to go over. If it's your first time tuning in, my name is Spencer Sue, your tech realtor of the Bay Area. And what I always do on every Friday at around 12 o'clock Pacific time, I go live on my social media YouTube channels to go over what are some headline articles of the week, give you my thoughts about that. We'll talk about what I see in the market as well. And you will personally see for yourself what is going on from a data perspective. Of course, if there's any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments below. If you're watching live, I will answer it and get back and respond to it. If you're watching this on my podcast or on YouTube at a later time, feel free to write below. I will respond as I do respond to every comment that comes in. Let's take a look at some of the headline articles of the week. San Francisco Bay Area condo market showing signs of rebound. There are the real estate developer ZNL Properties and its sales and marketing partner Compass Development Marketing Group are reporting an uptick in buyer interest and sales activity in three of its properties located in hotspots areas of San Francisco since the start of 2021. So it's, you know, there's been a, a lot of press about everybody leaving the Bay Area, everybody leaving San Francisco, and certainly that has been the case in the past. But, you know, you may think, hey, look, is this developer just trying to bring back interest, stir up a little bit of commotion so that people might start looking back in the Bay, in San Francisco? Um, they are true. It, I mean, a lot of people are starting to look back in San Francisco. I think a lot of it goes to they understand that this is a great opportunity to get into the market where it's been kind of depressed for a long while. If you saw my weekly market updates, you will see for yourself, like prices have increased again for condos in San Francisco. So it is true. A lot of people see the light at the end of the tunnel. They see the opportunity to be back in the city and they see the opportunity to be able to get in at some of the lowest prices it has been in the last couple of years. Pair that with interest rates, the value of your monthly payment goes a lot further than you have had in the last three to four years in the city. So a lot of people are playing that as well. So I agree with this. There is more activity. It's nothing crazy though, but there is more activity than, than there was over the last uh, end of last year. So we get this comment a lot, uh, which is related to, oh, for some reason, I'll have to get this activated, but this is the headline article, which big city has California's most overvalued homes? LA, San Diego too high, San Francisco just right. right pretty interesting because at the end of the day, the valley goes with um, what are the actual average prices, what are the incomes that are happening in this you know in the area. And so it's certainly interesting to see I'll get this fixed later on, but it is interesting to see that a lot of areas have had a big migration of people moving towards those areas. And so the income doesn't actually justify too much of the average prices there. That's what it's a key metric is, is based off of income and what the average prices are of how an area is considered overvalued or not. Those are the biggest metrics that people kind of forget to see. Just because home prices are a certain price doesn't mean it's cheap. It doesn't also mean it's affordable. It really is depending on the income of that particular area. I think there's some glitch uh, or some uh, thing that I need to activate here as well, which is related to Fry's. So Fry's Electronics, actually is closing, I think, almost all of its locations. So, so for, for many of you that have spent a lot of time, like myself, especially at those venues, Fry's Electronics, all of those areas are closing down. And a lot of those areas are also, if you notice where they're at, in really prime locations. Like they're really off of like uh, next to some ramps. They're on prime areas and they're a huge space, like a huge commercial space, but also a huge, uh, huge parking lots altogether. So it's going to be interesting to see over time what will happen with that space. Will, uh, will it get torn down and then be homes there? Will it just be ch churned into different types of new updated commercial space? It will be case by case with the city, but it will be interesting to see. Here's another news in the local area. For those that have been here for a long time, affordable homes eyed at Chuck E. Cheese San Jose sites. Uh, so there's a lot of Chuck E. Cheeses all over. And um, for those that know of the area, you have this, for the longest time I didn't even know, I didn't realize it was a robotic uh, 
mascots. <laughs> so, so these robotic mascots and, you know, Chuck E. Cheese is kind of something in the past, almost like a relic in the past. Um, and a lot of them will, will likely be closing as well. So similar story to, uh, with the fry side of things, for those that have been in the Bay area for a long time, these are staples in the area, but now there may be opportunities, right? To convert these into some affordable housing. You can see quite a bit of housing can be there just from a site itself, 200 homes. So it'll be interesting to see as well of how these play out. But we're going to see a lot of these opportunities of like retail space that are not doing well. Um, and in this case, you know, a lot of the actual retailers that are not doing well. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if the, if the cities will start granting permissions to convert these commercial spaces into residential spaces. As we all know, we need a whole lot more residential space. Now, what else is going on? Tech, data center firm assembles big North San Jose properties. One of the biggest things is that while a lot of corporate real estate offices are not doing well, there is a lot of opportunity to convert these into data centers, or I don't think it will convert into warehouses. I think that will be a lot more difficult to do because it doesn't make too much sense for them to have prime data center space in these very expensive areas. However, don't be surprised if we see a lot more of these changes. So whether it's colo locations like these players here, it could be Amazon Web Services, it could be Google. I suspect a lot of these developments will continue to happen as you can see of the spaces that are not doing as well that are typically more office or retail space and turn into these kind of plays. So I'll be on the lookout for that. I don't. It's not gonna employ a whole lot of jobs but it'll just be a repurpose of the space. There's not a lot of employees that'll be working at a data center relative to an office space, but it'll be interesting to, it'll be interesting to see and it'll certainly remove available office space that are uh, in these you know, very, very good prime locations. All right, let's talk about a little bit about Compass. So we've always heard about Compass because Compass has made a huge splash when they entered the market many, many years ago. It first started off by acquiring a lot of first big teams, and then it got very big by acquiring even offices, which has been controversial because a lot of those offices that got acquired, they didn't have the same golden handcuffs that teams did. And uh, unfortunately, I was not in the industry when they were land grabbing uh, all of this uh, you know, talent and market share because they got really, really good uh, compensation packages. But you know, how did they go through this acquisition spree? Number one, they were in a massive acquisition mode. Uh, they were backed by SoftBank. At that time, things were just expand, expand, expand. And so the numbers are in though. You can see it for yourself. Generated quite an amount of, quite a bit of revenue, which is a little bit surprising on my end of how much revenue they generated, but it's kudos to them. 3.7 billion in revenue. But from a from a financial statement perspective, they also lost. 270 million in 2020. So they were certainly losing a lot of money. And as you can see from the previous uh, years, how much more money they have lost over the years. But a lot of it is, is fairly normal when it came to acquiring companies, um, getting talent. The question moving forward for them is that once they're public, are they able to retain all of that talent? And one of the interesting things, it'll be interesting to see how they structure this so with my brokerage, which is at eXp, we are a publicly traded company. Take a look at the stock ticker. You'll see for yourself, eXpi. It's done phenomenally well, especially being a public company and us being shareholders in that company. But I think it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see if Compass wants to go public, if they'll have a similar model as eXp does, which allows maybe their own employees to be shareholders of the company. I think that was certainly unlock a lot of interesting potential, especially because Compass has already, as you can see, 19,000 agents, uh, which actually is not, so it's not that much. Um, when I actually look at this number again, 19,000 isn't much. To give you an idea, at EXP, EXP, we have about, I think, 40,000 agents now across the US. But Compass is different. They're much more concentrated in specific areas. Uh, so they're not like a fully national, but they're in the major, hubs uh, of around the country. And so something to be interesting interesting to track for those that invest in stocks and want to uh, you know, invest in real estate companies, uh, they will go public uh, 
in the future and in your future. Okay, so that was a little bit about the news. Let's talk about the data itself. As always, we always start out with San Mateo County, take a look at what's going on here. For this week, we have a lot of new listings, 192 new listings. How many continued pending this week? 176. That's a good balance, um, but it still shows you that things have been moving and progressing very quickly. But let's look at the data itself. Right now we are at uh, the beginning of March. You can see the prices. I don't think it will be this high, or I hope it won't be this high, quite frankly, moving forward. I think it will lower down if we look at it from a week by week perspective. But we can take a look at what happened the previous month in February. As you can see, these are all time record highs. It has done very well. And as you can see, of the increase over the last couple of months, we're talking about between about a 10 to 15% increase for single family homes in San Mateo County. Something to be mindful of. Look at condos and townhomes. People see the light at the end of the tunnel again. As you can see, the prices have increased about, I would say, 8 to 10% over the last two, two months or so in San Mateo County for condos and townhomes. And now you can see so far in March, it's already picking up to be some of the highest it has ever been. A lot of it has to do with people do understand that the light is at the end of the tunnel. Should you buy right now in those areas? You probably should. If you know you're going to be back in the office, which a lot of people will be going back to the office and they understand traffic and how it was just a, year, a little over a year ago, people are starting to realize that. And as you can see, the market has reflected that. Let's take a look at Santa Clara County. Santa Clara County remains very strong. Look at the number of new listings, 459. Contingent pending a week, 417. Do not complain. We have a lack of supply. We, do, we have plenty of new listings. Right. As you can see, there's more new listings than there was even in the highest times of last year. So there is a lot more properties on the market than before. However, things still go very quickly and you can see prices continue to increase. It's just the buyer demand continues to be very strong. I mean, look at these numbers in March. I mean, it will be incredible if it's anywhere close to this and it would be very scary if it was. Because if you look at February, we're talking about about we're talking about about one point four five million dollars for a medium single family and so far for march it's already at over 1.6 which is a hundred and fifty thousand dollar increase uh in in this period i suspect it's going to be closer to 155 but it's still a significant amount over what others have sold for in the past but that is just a new reality same with condos and townhomes look at this increase right you can see from february we're at the all-time highs of the year and then march continues to look that way I've got in contract, as a reminder, I've helped 12 families buy so far in the first two months. So I know exactly what prices have had to go. People have certainly got into the townhome market, the condo market, just by default, right? They couldn't afford or they didn't want to compete in the single family space, which is very competitive. So they opted in for those other units. The thing, the situation is happening across the board. I mean, look at Alameda County. It's a big start for them as well for March. I mean, look at these numbers. Median sales price for a single family over 1.2. That is compared to February numbers, which are the all-time recent highs at over at about a little under 1.1. So we're seeing this trend across every county. Contra Costa, same thing. I mean, look at these numbers. Not as steep of an increase because it's been very strong over the weeks and the months but it also continues to break record highs. Same with condos, townhomes. As of March, it seems like it will continue to push records. Last but not least, let's take a quick look at San Francisco so we can take a look at what's going on. Look at how San Francisco ended for a single family for, for February. It is actually a little bit higher than it has been all year round. So that's something to be taking a note of. Nothing crazy, as you have seen from the other charts, but it has continued to pick up. And look at the March time frame, same result in this case, like every other county pushing record highs. Look at the condo market and townhomes. For a while, there are opportunities for because prices have declined for medium sales price from the highs. But you can see it has picked up again. You can see the February numbers are kind of matching what it has been out through the highs, you know, through the year. And then March continues to pick up, uh, although briefly. So I hope this gives you an idea of actually what is happening with the local market at this time. Prices continue to increase. Uh, interest rates do also inc have increased as well. So for those that have considered to refinance, reach out to me. 
For many of you that know, my wife is becoming a lender herself. So we have decided to bring a lot of it in-house. But at the end of the day, I will then recommend to you what is the best kind of program because every bank and every mortgage broker will have its strengths and weaknesses depending on your individual kind of situation and what kind of loan that you're looking at. So reach out, be on that list for that if you ever want to consider. Right now, they give you an idea for purchases. We're talking about getting about 3% for a 30-year fix. Uh, it has picked up about a quarter of a percent in the last two, three weeks. So it's been a very steep increase uh, given where the 10-year treasury yields have been. So something to be mindful of that. But of course, if you or anyone you know has any interest about buying or selling in the Bay Area, let's chat. I'm never too busy to have a conversation to be able to help you every step of the way. Enjoy the weekend, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.